This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Okay, it is Thursday, August 22nd. It is 6.06 .06 p.m. and this is the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. Um, I will take that here. So we do allow public speak until 6.15. Is there anyone here who is? We don't have anybody here for public speak. I don't have to wait, do I? No, because we're not. This isn't like a public hearing. So Seeing that there's no guest for public speak, we're going to move on. Um, we do not have June meeting notes, so we're going to table that until um, September. So I think the bulk of our meeting we can spend looking at Kayam's fantastic draft memo. How do we want yeah. to go about doing that? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't look at it before. I, I know you just said it. Yeah. Um, do you want to share your, I mean, we don't have to go through the whole thing, right? Do you want to share your screen and go over like the general gist of it? Yeah, I can like describe the sections. Okay. Um, could you make it? Oh yeah, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um, like people, little people, oh yeah. Sorry, Google Meet is not my. Um, Google also tries to make everything so simple, and by doing it, it makes everything very difficult. Should I change the layout to make the rest of us smaller? Can I make you the spotlight? Yeah, that's what I want to do. Sorry. <laughs> like how you're proud of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait, wait, everyone. You can see, right? All right. Stay in school. That is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So overall, like you can see in the table of contents, this is generally how I organized it. Um, putting a bunch of context and problem defini uh, defining towards the front, establishing the goals and priorities of like why we are doing this, why it's important to do, um, and then getting into the recommendations. Um, I started with like parking minimums um, because it was it sort of doesn't fit in any of the other boxes and it just made sense to put it all up front. Um, and then it sort of goes to a little bit more complex as we as we go. Um, and then I'll talk about this more when we get there. Um, but then I go into potential community concerns. So this is where I'm pulling in the information that I got from like Greg um, and the information from the school uh, population projection report, that kind of stuff. Um, and then traffic congestion, I think I'm mainly just going to talk about how walkability and uh, takes cars off the road and how, you know, in the future we need to fight for more public transportation, that kind of thing, if people want that. Um, and then, yeah, conclusion and next steps that just sort of ties it all together with the housing production plan, because when I was reading really closely, a lot of these suggestions are already in there. Yeah. So yeah. this is sort of like, hey, this expires two years from now. Let's get this all done. Um, wrap it up in a bow. Uh, and then I will hope to just list out all of the immediate recommendations, just like so they could take it and list like list it as a motion if they wanted to. Um, Here's your draft motion to approve <laughs> everything that yeah. we put in here. Um, and then a little bit more about the long term recommendation um, and then. I don't know what the process looks like, but I was thinking maybe a little paragraph about what this looks like moving forward, how we would um, collaborate moving forward, like with the uh, ordinance committee. And, and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, because I assume most people won't read the full 30 pages. I'll do an executive summary. That's just one to two pages of everything. Um, and yeah, I mean, at some point we will have to read everything, but yes. Yeah. Well, I assume the city council will read everything. I approve. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just like in the introduction, I give a little bit of history of like the 
rationale behind zoning regulation, um, how some of the consequences today, um, pulling from. Oh, Donna has no audio. Oh. As in she can't hear us or. Um, she might not be able to hear us. Oh, go to the three thingies. Go to the three dots. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. And then go to uh, these. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Uh, no, no settings. Uh, yep, settings. And then this, go to that up there, the video. Oh, no. Uh, no canceling. Oh. It says that it's putting out audio. That little, like, blue. It's her. her. Click on it. This thing? Yeah, click on that. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I wonder if her speaker is turned down. Go to the speaker one. Yep. Click on that. Oh, no. Okay. It should be. Um, let me just email her back. I'm on Google Meet, but I'm getting it again. Oh, well, the audio is working on my. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is. I feel like screeching on my. Yeah. Hand, so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I also can't hear you. Great flying choice, by the way. Kind of. Oh, thank you, Century Gothic Pro. I changed it like today. It's like mm, I don't like this basing. Donna, can you um, unmute yourself and try if you can? Hear, never mind, you can't hear us. Is there a chat function? Uh, I don't know. Do we have a chat? I, mean, I can. Should in the bottom right. There. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not even all this kind of. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I spelled. Uh, Century Gothic. Really I'm texting her. Okay. But it seemed you were getting feedback, right? So it seems like yeah, like the audio is running through the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, she can't respond back to you. Why? Because not everyone can respond. So go back to the chat chat then. Oh, let everyone see messages. Oh, oh, no, it's up all the way. I have the closed captioning on, but it's garbled. <laughs> I don't. Do you like hover over her name, like in the uh, right list? Is there like some? Click on those three dot things. There. Next to Donna's name. Oh, or, or click that. We can do that too. I mean, she could try call, um, try logging off and logging back in. Sometimes that works. She could also call in. That's true. And then she could have the video and the audio. Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's so I can pull up here. I can find it for you. Right here. Without my glasses. Uh, <laughs> it's an obscure reference. <laughs> um, I can see it's just blurry. I'm like 20. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like not that bad, bad, but um, I definitely meant to. Oh, she left the meeting. All right, let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
I think a comment while we're waiting for Donna mm -hmm. about the. I was thinking for the intro, um, would it make sense to include anything about the housing production plan up front just to kind of help like ground it in a little bit more like, like these are, because I what you said about like, oh, these are mostly recommendations that were in the production plan. It might be good to just like lead up front with that. Um, yeah. I know, I, yeah, I mean, because it looks like a lot of your intro, um, it kind of like helps, yeah, frame the issues and draws out like a lot of national um, recommendations, I guess. But we can also be like, oh, and also like however many years ago, five, ten years ago, these were all recommendations that were still like kind of churning through. Yeah. And then you can still mention it at the end too, um, conclusion and next steps. but. All right, well, let's keep going and then hopefully she'll join, I guess, because I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, yeah, so in the introduction, I sort of just give a little bit of the history of zoning and its rationale, um, and then I pull in a little bit of information from like reports and research done um, more contemporaneously, um, and, like talk about some of the bias built into zoning. Um, in general, uh, there's like a multi multiple different reports that I reference, like the EPA 2009 report, Essential Smart Growth Fixes for Urban and Suburban Zoning Codes, um, the East Hampton Housing Data from Mass Housing Partnership, um, the East Hampton Housing Production Plan, uh, the Equity or um, Exclusionary by Design, the report prepared by Amy Dane. Um, and there's a couple other ones. There's like the 2017 report um, from the EPA that talks about um, smart growth for suburban um, zoning. Um, but yeah, I also talk about like how 38% uh, of our greenhouse gas emissions as a community are attributed to gasoline vehicle uses. Um, so that's bringing in the climate action plan stuff, which like uh, municipal action 10 on there is to like look at zoning, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was mm. topical. Yeah. Um, and I see here you do you do reference the housing production plan in the intro. So I think that's probably all, all set. Yeah. And I mean, I think yeah. some of what you're saying too yeah. um, can go into the forward, like yeah. explaining our rationale for like yeah. why we're preparing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Why have we spent a year working on this? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, then the goals and priorities I sort of pulled together, like identifying themes from all of the recommendations that everyone made. Um, so in, uh, incremental upzoning and infill development. Um, so that's specifically being um, responsive to concerns about aesthetic and historical social qualities about a neighborhood, but also you know, addressing the housing crisis um, and infill development is a strategy that a lot of communities around the country are using. Um, and then I also talk like bringing the housing policy, policy guide from the um, American Planning Association um, that talks about like how municipalities should be adopting these bylaws um, that incentivize and facilitate like a broader range of mm -hmm. housing options. Um, number two is removing barriers to affordable housing, which is just sort of our mission as a mm -hmm. committee. And again, I'm just like bringing in quotes to support all that information. Um, increased freedom of land use, um, which I think sort of Ben's genius idea is to frame this more in a libertarian so, sense. <laughs> um, We're like, doing this for you. Yeah, like freedom. Like I underline the section that like zoning as a regulation, like should only restrict uses that are genu genuinely incompatible. Like that's the underlying rationale of zoning, we shouldn't let it be, we shouldn't let it expand beyond its scope. Um, then yeah, climate change mitigation and adaptation, because I think that pulls in the climate action plan um, really well and talks about walkability, mixed uses, that best. Um, then I get into the partnership recommendations. Um, and here's where I think I don't know if we want to skip over where I still need information, um, but there is some stuff that I need clarification on. But okay. 
Um, like parking minimums, I wasn't sure what specifically we were doing with this table. Like I rewatched that meeting and I definitely got I can answer all your questions. Yeah, I got this from it. I got that we decided 1.5 spaces per unit. This may be reduced to an average of one per unit. But that's sort of what's already there. So I was I had the same kind of question because that was originally my foot my my task. The only other note is that I have in is that table 10 3? Yes. So the only other note I have is that in table 10 3 combines the three categories of conversion of existing one family dwelling, multi family housing, and multi family with 15% affordable. So you could combine them all to be one and a half spaces per dwelling in it. Um, I have. Because multi family housing says one for each bedroom in each unit plus one visitor space, which is insane. All right, my notes say 1.5 spaces per unit, but may be reduced. Right, we based said on that unit mix and then one additional visitor space per unit. Yeah, but so I guess where, ten where my confusion Remember. is the multifamily housing zoning is already that, pretty much. I think we were talking about changing all the so like two of them say one and a half and one of them says one. Okay, yeah. Or no, it says the one for space, bedroom. The visitor space just threw me off because I was like, mm -hmm. if we're focusing on like low density residential, then that, then that would make more sense. Like if we just leave the visitor space out for those two, but. Do you have the chart up, Kira? I'm Shira, yes, I do. Shira. Sorry, I'm, I'm not your dog. <laughs> no. I have a friend named Kira. Sorry. I have a lot of friends with dogs named Kira. Oh, <laughs> my dog's name is Leia. Um, I only, can, yeah. Oh, Donna can hear us. Yay! Yay, Yay. Donna! Um, I don't have the chart. You're welcome. With me. Um, do you have the chart open? Yeah, well, it's right there, too. Is it that is the direct oh. excerpt? You want the zoning one? This I'm, is a screenshot from the current zoning. Oh, perfect. Three dwelling was one duplex. I think the idea was to keep to make multifamily and multifamily with affordable the same. Because they're not. Right. And that multifamily one is. And have it be 1.5 spaces per unit. This may be reduced to an average per one based on unit mix and one additional visitor space per 10 units. So I feel like it was combining multifamily and multifamily housing with affordable to be the same. Okay. And the conversion one too, according to my notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One and a half. Because multifamily housing, you need one per bedroom plus one additional space for every 10 units. But multifamily housing with affordable, you need one and a half spaces per unit. So we were trying to make them the same, I think is the idea. Yeah, because okay. yeah, one of them is bedrooms and one of them is units. Right. So also, like, like, also right. Yeah. yeah. So we're just going to straight up go just to units and it yes. will be one. Okay. That yeah. clarifies. And what are we I saying is the mechanism? Oh, oh, no, you go. I was just going to say, what's the mechanism for it being reduced based on that unit mix and project location? Is that, um, how is that, how is that currently done? Is it like a special permit so plan or something? I think it would be a special permit. Yeah. So I think we could also say like as determined by yeah, like if there's the plenty of street parking. Building commissioner or something or um Oh, so the question is who makes that decision if you yeah. can reduce it? Would it be part of the conditions of the permit? This is where Jamie would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I think maybe we can leave that for now, but I guess I'd, I'd be curious to know, like for that last one, there is currently a mechanism for it to be reduced based on unit mix and project location. So what, what is, how is that done? Currently, I just like control F. Yeah. Um, but, 
Yeah. Literally the only time it's said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only time it says unit. Yes. Might be in chapter 10. I mean, it must be because if you go down to here, multifamily dwellings are always permit approvals. Mm -hmm. So it must just be a part of that process. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then if they were permitted by right, I'm sure that we would have to have a different language. But. Okay, yeah, so it's section uh, bullet point 10.15 waivers says any section or subsection of 10.1 off street parking may be waived or modified by the permit granting authority or the special permit granting authority. So I think that's a good catch all where it's like whoever is granting the permit for whatever development is happening can give that waiver. So the developer could ask for that waiver based on yeah sense. okay all right so that clears that up for you yeah um all right definition of family um so i just created a little placeholder blurb um for approval by jackie and um Lindsay. and then i Pretty sure this is what the recommendation was. We recommend modifying the definition of family to all the people who occupy a single housing unit, regardless of their relationship to one another. Um, I don't know, like, if we want to be explicit that we just are pulling that directly from Medford. Um, I think it's helpful to know that, like, we didn't make it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they made it up. Yeah, Medford made it up, and we liked it. Um, and then I got this quote from the meeting, like I put the whole meeting through a transcription thing and just like tried to pull out because it was hard to listen <laughs> or like it was hard to really get yeah, what right. actual decisions were made. Um, but I got the affordable housing should be rented or sold to an occupied only by eligible households as delineated by state regulation. And when I searched part of that, I found if I control C or uh, control F. That was part of our fair housing conversation. Yeah, it's the cost and eligibility requirements. Right now it says it's 7.464, 7 number one, um, affordable housing shall be rented or sold to an occupied, to and occupied only by eligible households if approved by DHCD during the initial water release up only. Permits will be given to eligible households that meet one or more local preference categories and affordance to blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think that we were just trying to change that. I think um, I think there was, it could have been that, or there might be have been other instances too where the zoning try, gets into the like eligibility of the household, mm -hmm. which like either for renting or I guess, or owning. And I think the idea was to recommend that we take that out because one, like, the state regulation is going to define that. And so then if it's in the zoning and it contradicts to what the state regulation is going to be and or if the state regulation changes, yeah. then so there could have been more than one, but it's definitely in the compliance and yeah, in the fair housing fair time. Okay. Well. So we should, Jackie and Lindsay, need to summarize that for you. Um, did you also include we did also talk about um, recommending that they change Department of Housing and Community Development to Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. Since we're in here, we might as well correct the name of the. Yeah. Yeah. Where should I put that? Um, maybe up by parking. Like it's okay. like a random, you know, like things that don't fit into other categories. Um, oh, we're just gonna. Just like red, red line the whole uh, yeah like you should just update yeah, while, while you're at it while you're at it this is also wrong yeah um 
court needs to be changed. Yeah. yeah. So Jamie warned us to not get too worried about all the things that need that were incorrect because then we would never be. Or done. better yet, should we just refer to it as like the state's like housing agency or something? Because maybe the next administration will change <laughs> change, change the thing. <laughs> I think I think, <laughs> I think we're safe for What's it called now? So the DCP? Executive yeah. Office of Housing and Livable, Livable Communities. Community. Exactly. Most people call it HLC of housing is what I'm and HLC um, and livable communities, housing and livable communities. It's now an executive branch instead of an undersecretary, which is a good thing. It yeah. like elevates it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that fully yet. <laughs> All I know is that like my website does not explain the difference very well. Who didn't ask ChatGPT? Um, all I know is they like changed all of their lawyers and we had to do all of our contracts over it. It took us like took forever. Interesting. <laughs> and now they're like a little bit more interested in making sure you're following every single rule, which I don't know if that's just the change to this or something else happened, but it's pretty right. Um, okay. Well, um, I sort of included your community character section mostly unaltered. I like did the things that Grammarly suggested, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if you want to speak more to this. Um, uh, well, there's this great book by some Boston University professors that looked at 97 cities and towns in Massachusetts, mostly in Eastern Massachusetts, but basically looked at all of their public meetings around like housing development in general, and then looked at who on public record spoke mm -hmm. and then basically like figured out who those people were and found i mean there's more there's a lot in the book but basically found that for the majority of people who stand up in public and speak against development are older white homeowners mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of what you would expect right but like this is and that they have in you know end up having a huge influence on some of their communities uh, but the part that like i'm referencing here has to do with the term neighborhood oh, yeah. character hey, Jackie. and basically how um they use that term as a way to like say that they don't just like we all hear it like so it's always going to ruin the character of our community but it can be seen as um racist um which, right. uh, yeah so anyway that's kind of but like i mean you're an excellent writer so if there's things you want to change about it feel free to um but that's the base, like kind of the basis for why we started thinking about this. Um, the other thing, I don't know, did I write that in? Can you scroll down? I don't remember what else I gave you to say. I, yeah, this is the purpose and consideration section. I added this little blurb because the um, exclusionary by design report like mm. speaks to this exactly as well. Um, but then I think it goes into the next like section that you okay oh donna go ahead you have your hand raised oh do i i think you can unmute and speak is that true can you hear us do you have to add her as a co-host i think so is there something about the three buttons next to her <laughs> That's always the trick. Um, ask, add as co-host. I don't know, Donna. Are you, can you hear us? Do you want to speak? Usually, people just like unmute their. Uh, oh wait, let me. Let me oh, is she speaking and we can't hear her? Well, I think that was. Oh. Yeah. Lie at. Let's go to see if we can see her. There you are, Donna. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. <laughs> I know. She's trying to fix that. But we can read her lips. <laughs> I wish there was. Oh. Okay. So the speakers work. No, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I bet it's her Bluetooth. Donna, do you want to send whatever it is to me in an email and I'll read it out loud? Or call her. And yeah, she'll right, talk. call you. Or, yeah, if you want to call in with your phone. I don't have her phone with the button. She can send it to me. You can't hear me, but I want to know if the site is in the text. Um, yes, is the book cited in the text? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. 
Um, the other thing that I've been thinking about related to community, oh, what site is it? Are you talking about the book that I was just talking about? Um, it's called, it's called oh, I don't think you can see it here. It's called Neighborhood Defenders. I see one. Show that camera. I know. Show <laughs> <laughs> the camera. Uh, so okay. Figure that out. Um, the other thing that I wonder if we should put here um, is like for me, I don't know if I wrote this. Maybe I didn't. Like how I feel about my neighborhood or community or how Jackie might feel about your neighborhood or like is a or yours is a feeling how you like, might feel about my neighborhood right and like feelings don't belong in zoning right like mm -hmm. you know like it's I just feel like we should it's not fair to ask like our local ZBA or our local planning board to like make a decision based on like a feeling mm -hmm. so I feel like there's like you're being asked did I maybe I did write that oh no I did I, did, yeah, I no, remember talking yeah. about um, using like the word like aesthetic and, and facade and stuff instead of like fits the character of the. Well, we did make a bunch of changes either to entirely strike it yeah. or to put things like architectural or. I know. I yeah. feel like character is kind of like a cop out because it's like you can. If you, Walk if you, down if you, my street and yeah. there's literally every kind of architecture. Yeah. All it. Anything. Well, and if you do have legitimate gripes with a project, then I think if you dig a little deeper, you can, you know, you can narrow it down to density, traffic, mm -hmm. something, something, you know, whatever it may be. But just to call it neighborhood character is just right. Yeah. yeah, we have a Kwanzaa hut. I know you do. <laughs> Across the street. Yeah, it's a Kwanzaa hut. Oh, nice. <laughs> Those are from Rhode Island. That's where they were made. Yeah. Well, they came from Mount Tom, apparently. What was made in Rhode Island? There's a Quonset hut, so it looks like it's shaped like this. It's this long, right? But it's a it's a half circle. I thought you said it's Quonset. made of like metal. I I it's attached to a house, right? Yeah. Well, the Quonset huts were like repurposed oh. after some war when I they had a bunch of them. I have yeah. noticed that on your street, I'm like that's a strange building. But yeah, one of the, the neighbors. It said it came off of Mount Tom because it was someone's like probably bunker. That makes sense. Yeah, but there's more of them in Rhode Island because that's the where they were manufactured. Structure. What is it though? There's, there's a whole use is for it like an abode? farm yeah. storage, but also it's people convert yeah. mm -hmm. to weapon storage and more. There. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. What it, is. it looks like it's half of a giant oil like barrel. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. Springfield Armory. Um, all right, we can move on. Yeah, sorry. But why is the sign Why did that come off? Come up, Brian. Right because history. we were talking about character okay. and like different, uh, different ways of looking at your street. Yeah. Right? So oh, no. you walk through our neighborhood over there. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff. Oh, so how do you define character? Would faint if they walked around Austin for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's like a dirt. giant glass and metal box <laughs> here, and then like a little Spanish cottage here. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, so I did my best to compact the thing um, to like four or five pages. Yeah. I wanted to go back actually oh, to yeah. the, the first paragraphs of the community character. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm just wondering, uh, like, I don't want it to come off as accusatory or anything. And what do you figure? <laughs> I feel like the last few paragraphs do a good job of talking about like why neighborhood character um, doesn't really encompass that much or doesn't really mean that much. And it, and it is just a way for residents to oppose new housing. But I guess I'm not sure how that ties into the demographics of uh, folks coming who are using that language or, or citing the, the information. Um, and I don't want it to sound like we're like calling people out for like having other sometimes other that way yeah we're, for, that for having way. other motives and I, mm -hmm. I could just totally imagine someone reading these 30 pages and then just like seeing those those two oh, paragraphs and being like you know really mm -hmm. focusing on that so you were like, saying do we need it yeah mm -hmm. um but uh, you know i think it's we a could flip. well we could have less of it mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, I think it's interesting to have like some research behind like, yeah, yeah. what we could take less, like talk about it less. Right. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or flip flop it right. so that we talk more about um, that it's used. I mean, to me, like the fact that it appears 25 times and it's never defined right. is mm -hmm. part That's of the enough. problem. Mm -hmm. right. So maybe we flip, we could flip it a little bit yeah, and talk about like that, that first. Yeah. Um, and that it's based on a feeling and that it, um, I mean, I cut like, honestly, I cut and pasted some of my comments from one of the, like some other yeah, meeting that I put sure, yeah. <laughs> through in here. So we could, we could make it less um, inflammatory. I agree. I think there's people who are already a little bit fixated on this piece of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I have, I have to confess that I am just back from vacation this week and I had promised time I was going to get So I am happy to go through at some point and also. Jackie's a very good editor. Yeah, no, I. <laughs> editing. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good point, Ben. We can, we can soften this section yeah. a little bit. Because I don't, I think, the, I mean, this is my personal feeling, but I think it's important. So I think we need to figure out a way to like yeah. make yeah. it feel uh like something people can be get behind yeah because at, at its most basic the most basic issue is that it's an undefined term that's used throughout the right. but it, and then it's the second part of that is how it's used, used. okay <laughs> I guess. Right. Yeah. or how it can be, how it can be used. yeah yeah and i i mean i think i put this in here but maybe i didn't like and it's not even the intent right people yeah. We, like I don't assume when people use the term that their intent is right. to, mm -hmm. but the impact mm -hmm. right. is that it can feel that way. So yeah. I think it's helping also people realize the impact of their works. Exactly. Well, Kyan, would you be willing to share the doc version of this um, and give us comment or rights? Oh wait, or is that anti-open meeting? That was what I was worried about. Oh. Really. I was sharing it with one person at a time. Or yeah, you like can't do that. Not, or like not having actual de uh, deliberation happening over email or like over two comments. So we can each do it and bring it to a meeting though, right? right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So like the PDF that I sent everyone, you could mark it up and then send me those markups. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Like, it can't be like a shared document. Yeah, you can't like so just share it with people. Your PDF can't be a conversation. Okay. Even a notes conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm just distracted by people outside. <laughs> and there's a dog. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. I see my dog. Oh, I think that's a good point. Referring the character. Yeah. Don't yeah, so you just joke. had another comment, and we missed. I missed it. Did you see it? Um. Um. Oh, there we go. Yes, we should reframe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So we can each revise independently and send it to Kayam. Okay. I'm not really taking notes because it's like, oh, that's okay. what would I write down? That we're looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's recorded. We're still looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can we each revise it and send it to Kayam or, or do we have to bring it to the meeting? We can revisions? each revise it and send it to Kayam and then review the revisions at the meeting. Right. So he can compile our revisions? Yes. Okay. It just can't be like a back and forth. That part I'm not as clear about. Yeah. Okay. I know in a document you can't do that. We can't do it like in text or like in yeah, like you, you can't like in it. line text, right? Mm -hmm. But can he compile can Kayam compile like each our, individually yeah. send comments? Can he put them all together? So they're viewable. It's who's the weird. who's the open meeting person? Guru. Is it Barb? Okay, we can I can ask Barbara. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to call Barbara. Live <laughs> in the document yeah. doing that is not a way to that. Because promise. all of you are now communicating with him, he would be breaking open meeting law, I think. So I think you would have to be in a meeting setting potentially. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not it's it's not informational, it's correction, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, I will email, well, today's Thursday, but I will email Barbara in the morning and then she will let us know on Monday. Okay. 
trying to be like, yeah, she'll probably let you know if you want that she and I'm always like, don't respond to this today. Mm -hmm. she us. If I wanted it now, I would have called. <laughs> I do that all the time. Take your day off. All right, but also we're having some discussion now, right? So we yeah. know we're going to revise this section. Yeah. You missed the part where we skipped over your section because you still have to write it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> the OML presentation that I saved says reports or documents are not deliberation. Oh. Wait, say that again. So not deliberation, agenda scheduling, reports or documents, sub quorum, but not subcommittee, recess or a town meeting for emergency. But you're correcting it together. I think that's where it gets. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was told. Yeah, yeah. that's what. Well, we, we don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, no, I'm just as well making sure that I'm not. We are rule followers. Yeah. Because I can send you all a document and say, this is for your information. We'll discuss this at the meeting. Yeah. But if you're in it together and you're changing or conversing because you're in there together no but what we're saying is we each individually have our own copy no no i get that i get that but i don't know how that it's the putting it back together piece yeah okay okay we will find out he could, uh, he could put it all put it all back together live at the next meeting <laughs> <laughs> that sounds <laughs> fun it's easy uh, word no yeah. we cannot do that no that's, that's I was asking, can we just use a Google Doc? No, no. that's the definitely not. That's a definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, no, because people can't that would come and, and, and put it in public record, but no. Okay. Uh, all right, you want to keep going? Sure. Oh. Um, all right, so these are all the crazy chart. Um, yeah, the flexibility in land use. So like we were talking about the duplexes and duplex conversions by right. Um, I just sort of pasted in the tables um, with the track change sort of in the screenshot and then um, like put in narrative for each one of these changes. Wow, nice. Um, mixed use, I did the same thing. Um, Oh, sorry. Um, okay, talk about my feet. Okay, sorry. I, guess. I also made a note about the smart growth overlay mm -hmm. district, which is like sort of a hap, frankly, a haphazard kind of attempt at doing some of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, but it's really limited right now for where it's being used. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I mentioned that you know potentially we could expand this, but like our recommendations are a little bit more broad. Um. So talked about or put in narrative like all these changes. Um, I also mentioned, because I think it's important to mention the aquifer protection district that covers a lot of the um, residential R35 and R40 or specifically R40 because those restrictions like, like with the unit caps, those restrictions add uh, rain in like what can be developed anyway. So why, are, why is our zoning further restricting that? Um, and this next thing is that multifamily housing right. unit maximum. Um, so we recommend removing the current cap. Yeah. Um, and then this is sort of the exciting part um, that I got creative with, the creative, creating flexibility in dimensional regulations. Um, so this is like the section where I include um, the screenshots from the zoning that look at the actual typical a uh, lot area in frontage of these zones compared to what they're they are required to be um and then makes it clear that this is what our recommendation is and um that, and also includes narrative from the housing production plan that identifies that this that we do have restrictive area and use regulations and they disincentivize smaller scale um, construction of affordable housing um and particularly table 13 notes that like many district formulas for the required minimum land are unrealistic um, and should be reduced significantly. Um, so, sorry, what is table 13? Uh, table 13 in the East Hampton Housing Production Plan. So page 42 of the housing. Um, so the table that we'll see in a second, 13. 
in the uh, produ housing production plan. Oh, the housing yeah, production not, plan. Not zoning. Zoning. Yeah. yeah, it might be it might be worthwhile to like clarify that. Um, I mean, or I could pay better attention. Well, it is like just saying table 13 in yeah. a document like this is kind of confusing. Right. Um, there are many places with tables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say too, we, we could always um, do like an appendix or something with little snapshots from the screenshots or whatever of the production mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So our, what you'll see in the next table um, is my recommendation to simplify the six distinct residential zones into three larger zoner, zoning types that adhere to the typical dimensions of the lots within the zoning districts they replace. Um, so, and then also additional modifications are proposed to lot area frontage and setback requirements um, in line with the recommendations made um, in the housing production plan. So um, zones R5, R10, and R15 in this recommendation would be sort of com combined into an urban residential zone based on the existing R5, um, including the changes proposed previously regarding use um, and retaining all other reg regulations therein. So um, all the other like requirements that would be um, for the current R5 zone. You we shouldn't to, use the term neighborhood character. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to just take that out? Because <laughs> we're, we're telling them the existing look. land use pattern in those districts. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yellow is the change you have that we are proposing. That's where he's reminding himself to go back and change that. Actually, you make a good point. I was supposed to use blue for that. So, <laughs> yellow are the changes that we are proposing. We, oh, yellow is where we are proposing changes, yes. and the changes aren't in here. They are. I mean, in this exact table with the yellow. I don't think he's gone to the table yet. Oh. Oh, yeah, you'll... Yeah. Um, so, the combining 35 and 40 into a suburban residential zone based on the existing R15 zone. Um, just to get my character again. Um, and then R80 rural residential based on the current r40 and then this is this the might blow their mind <laughs> <laughs> they might be like wait what well it when might. i looked at it i was like wait this it makes sense though because it doesn't they're already so similar yeah it already r5, it like puts 10 and 15 the... i like made so many mistakes because i like was looking at the same word somebody and i'm yeah, like oh yeah. this one number is different yeah yeah, yeah. And I looked closer, start and, using like yes, and like, there really aren't the character. Yeah, there really aren't examples so of like patterns. neighborhoods, like large neighborhoods that are actually conformant to the current zoning. Right. Which, right. Yeah. Um, doesn't it make this? I mean, there's an argument that it makes the zoning board yeah. job me. easier too. If there's fewer zones, yeah, to know the codes for. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it'll blow their minds, but it does spark a conversation. <laughs> That maybe yeah after no, I, mean, I next, love it just, in the next iteration of this in ten years or whatever maybe we'll actually get to that yeah it may be a conversation of no right but I think it's important to engage in that yeah. conversation right like, inception mm -hmm. or like it's maybe like instead of fully redefining all of our zoning districts we tweak the existing zoning districts or something mm -hmm. then we were going big yeah. That's right. Oh, let's, let's go big. Bigger, go, go home. This See is the happens. table I was asking the questions of the yellow questions. Yeah. So the yellow, yellow, <laughs> yellow are the proposed changes. Yes. So, so those are the original numbers. Yes. So R U is firm formerly R fifteen or R five ten fifteen. 10, 15. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like there are specific changes here. Like some of these frontage stuff was just like incremental changes that like I realized the housing production plan was asking for. Um, there's this specific request that the housing production plan made um, in multifamily dwellings for um, for urban, for specifically for R15 was like, or for R5 was specifically 5,000 plus 2,500 for each unit more than one, which the housing production plan was like, wait, that means one, one in R5. So, they recommended specifically to change that to three. So I just did that. Um, so is the frontage just up at the top, like currently 50 and we're suggesting 10? No. Or? So this is front setback and then okay. this is frontage. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Um, so yeah. And I sort of, and I'll explain, um, and this gets to like what you guys were saying. Um, it's sort of, this would be sort of a band-aid to like, I think one of the underlying problems with their zone zoning, which is just that it's use focused um, and sort of outdated to like what a lot of municipalities are moving towards, which is a more form based zoning, um, which is much more about defining what character means and like defining what each community is going to look like rather than defining what is put on each plot of land, if that makes sense. Um, so, I guess to summarize, a land development regulation that fosters predictable vote results and a high quality public realm by using physical form rather than separation of uses as the organizing principle for the code. Um, so there's uses are still regulated to avoid like actual nuisances, um, but it is a little bit more like creative on um, what neighborhoods can look like and it provides like a roadmap um, for our developers. This is cool too, because if they if they're daunted by uh, adopting new zoning codes, like this is truly the go the go the go biggest. Here. Yeah, to fully <laughs> rewrite the code as form based instead of. Yeah, and I guess my and long story short, this whole section talks about how great like more um, modern zoning practices are. There's like template codes, like smart code that you can like customize to your community. Um, and there's also like guides, like the form-based code step-by-step -step guide for communities that like goes through the process of what um, the community has to do to like make this happen from scoping all the community engagement steps to like how to write an RFQ and like engage with the consultant to make this happen. Um, so I definitely think that it would be good to recommend that for the long term, but not necessarily something that we're expecting to happen. But I also mentioned that like this is a potential um, recipient of funding for like planning assistance grants and like mm -hmm. other um, public and private funding sources um, related to climate, related to housing and equity. Um, and then getting into the potential community concerns. So something that may impact this issue within the Affordable Homes Act that was recently passed. Okay. Oh, good point. Good point. Um, yeah, uh, and then the section on potential community concerns. So I think that this paragraph is, is good. It's like, as always, public engagement is the bedrock of the policymaking, pro uh, policymaking process and modifications to zoning regulations are no different. This information can help leaders in the community be champions for these evidence-backed reforms. Um, so this is including like the information that we got from um, Greg Nettleman, that's like even during peak usage, we use less than 25% of our water, um, fresh water pumping capacity, um, and that additional usage would uh, be basically unnoticeable, and that it actually would have the potential to generate additional um, revenue to pay for infrastructure improvements. It's interesting that there's such a different narrative out there in the community yeah. about the water and sewer well, infrastructure. Part of that is because our water bills have gone up recently because of upgrading systems and so i wonder if people are conflating those two things i don't know i just we often hear like oh our yeah. water system can't accommodate this or right. we can't like you know say yeah. it's just interesting when you actually ask the guy the, the dpw yeah yeah we, we we sell our we sell water right to other communities so oh we do i don't think i knew that so i think people are like you talk about the kind of water we are yeah. We're gonna have and like where's half my water we sell my water, <laughs> right? But that has to do partly with we're associated with Chicopee and not communities that are north of us, right? Mm -hmm. So we're more in line with um, the amount of water of communities that are north and they are south, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's part of so we have to do we have to do Go in. If there's a drought, we have to take all these precautions, but really, we still oh. like, we're actually fine. That's interesting. But it's it's I because it's your sprinklers on just because <laughs> coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. But it's because it's look. You need to be able to sell chicken. Chicken. Yeah, chicken bee water is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have award-winning water. You yeah. do. I, I do. One one thing I was wondering too is I wonder. He was, you know, he was. Uh, like, did he talk about the condition of the pipes and stuff? Because that's maybe what people are talking about. 
because I'm sure we've been replacing them, and also the system at the water treatment yeah. plant is very old. Yeah, because I'm I'm sure like any aging post-industrial city, East Hampton has old infrastructure, but that's not the same as no not enough water, obviously. Right. The computer that they use at the water department that manages all the water the system is uses Windows 90. <laughs> 90. So, 90. Line zero? Yeah, something like that. Like Windows <laughs> old. Windows old. old. Windows. But they when they buy off. it, when they, when they buy pr new programs or things like that, they have to change it mm -hmm. so it's compatible with that. Yeah, I remember them saying they have to send the computer out to get downgraded yeah. so it can be compatible. <laughs> yeah. Make this and different. other like parts and things like that they buy on eBay and stuff like that, right? Like when it becomes available, they like yeah, well, buy it up, right? Because that's all they. Huh. But still, that, that's money. That's money. To money to upgrade the system. Change. And they are the city is applying mm -hmm. for a mass work grant or something for um. Yeah, yeah, it's about the infrastructure. Yeah, that's true. Um, but for the Northampton Street project, the city did submit an application to help with infrastructure improvements, including infrastructure, water mm -hmm. uh, piping. Yeah, and it's not supposed to. And I think also this came up at the ZBA hearing for 385 Main Street. Like these new development actually helps us leverage money at the state to make infrastructure improvements. So, like, right. you know, like if you have this other thing then maybe MassWorks or somebody else is interested in helping you with your sidewalks or your water or where if they're less interested if you leave everything mm -hmm. there's nothing happening mm -hmm. so and what i think is like key about that is those improvements are going to cost what they cost regardless right like adding more housing isn't going to add to that cost right. if anything it'll allow you to spread those fixed costs over more ratepayers mm -hmm. and it's more efficient mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah that's what i was thinking about too Yes. Um, so yeah, that's all I really have fully written. Um, I have stuff in my head about school enrollment mm -hmm. and traffic congestion. I'm in alignment with the housing production plan. Um, and then, yeah, everything else I sort of explained in the beginning. Um, just listing off specifically, like, all the recommendations in narrative form bullets so they could be just brought before city council and put as a motion if, if they wanted um and then a little bit more of an explanation on the, what that long-term recommendation for smart code adoption would look like um and then a little bit of narrative of like what it what this will take to move forward um and i also found an interesting thing in this Dane report about um in 2020 massachusetts reformed the zoning act to reduce the vote threshold for local zoning reform so now it's uh, so in 2020, Massachusetts reformed the Zoning Act to reduce the threshold for zo local zoning reform. So now we can get this done with only a simple majority. Did communities have to adopt that? I don't know. No? Okay. I thought there was something about that that, like, Massachusetts made it a veil option, but the city or town had to adopt it, but maybe that's something else that I'm thinking of. I remember, I definitely yeah, I remember when I worked in Amherst, they adopted uh, a, a bylaw about accessible or, or ADUs, and, um, and they were able to use this. Yeah, new, okay. But I don't remember them adopting anything. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. I'm looking to see if there's um, yeah, no, it makes a good point though about the new, the newest housing bill. Yes. I have not. Maybe like, Donna wants to volunteer to be the person to review that. She's, she's an attorney. Yeah. If there's anything to review yet, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. I know her camera went off. Yeah. And then, like the law gets written, and then it's like what EOHLC is just like figure it out. There's no. It doesn't seem like there's a clear rulemaking oh, process or yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. We don't no. think about that part. <laughs> People who do have public policy degrees have to figure that out. Um, she's reading it, but it's really long and legal easy. <laughs> legal easy. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. It's legal easy difficult. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Really nice. Super yeah, impressive. Amazing. The font choice. Everything. <laughs> the headings, the format. <laughs> it's beautiful. The blue and just. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, it does like it does make it actually look really professional, and it is really professional. So that actually was a good. Time.
Add this to your portfolio of work to show seriously. Thanks, you Yeah, exactly. Um, I know. I started reading it. I was like, oh my God, I recognize this one. <laughs> it's drilled into us. Um, so to revisit the process. Yes. We have to find us. This is what Jamie told us. This is what Jamie told us. This is a while ago. So we need a city councilor um, to bring it forward. Or 10 people to sign. Something, oh, that right? was true. I didn't write that down, but you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's something about one or ten. Um, it was like so. Locals. Do you are you interested in sponsoring it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll sponsor it. I think I was asking. I was reaching out to someone to ask clarification. They and they had just indicated that it has to go to planning first. And I was like, that's not what I that's was told. Not what we heard. But because um, I'd also spoken to the former. Planner, planning director, and <laughs> uh, and he had said uh, the the it could take two paths, so you could go oh. either path. So, but I am going to. Ask, I'm sorry. Do we have new city planners? I will Not ask. Um, I'm going to ask Dylan on Monday. Oh, good idea. Okay, do you work with the planning? Dylan Maxfield, he's the associate planner. He's our only oh, planning okay. department staff person. Met him yet? Yeah. So, so my notes say that mm -hmm. we would find mm -hmm. a sponsor from city council to bring it forth. Mm -hmm. City council would send it to the ordinance subcommittee, yep. which would take could take three to six months. It could. This is the part that I'm a little bit confused about, but it could simultaneously go to planning right. board at the same time it goes to ordinance. There would be a joint public hearing mm -hmm. between planning and ordinance, and then it would go back to city council. That's what I heard too. Yeah. I don't see how, like, the planning board doesn't, like, I don't see how they would, like, take this up without, like, it going through city council. Well, I think, I, I think that's what the former planner was saying is that it can take either of these routes. Yeah. And so if it takes this route, it ends up being a joint hearing yeah. anyway, right? And then it has to go to city council for final approval, right? Or it starts in city council, but there still has to be a joint meeting with the planning, the planning right? So they're gonna have their process as well of reviewing it and things like that. And, and, and that. So I just, I want to, um, I, I want to be the most efficient with time. Um, mm. Because of, like hypothetically, it's it goes to city council and they're going to have their own process anyway, right? Like that's what I wanted. Because it might be uh, as a collective group, we're not going to send this to planning, and then it comes back to us anyway, right? So I just want to do that. Okay, peace out. I also ask like, um, is it kind of like a all or nothing with city like submitting something to city council, or is there room for? City Council or Planning Board to be like, like, edit it and do this is the version we want to adopt mm -hmm. or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it would go through edits. Okay. So they might say, oh, we don't like the idea of having one yeah. zone. Right. Exactly. right? So, so, and whether that's coming back to us or the City Council members doing it, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't, I think you once you pass it to yeah, us, exactly. it's, I think okay. you, you are participants then in that process. And so yeah. when it's presented to City Council, you know, I might talk about a little that I would defer to you all to be the one and then to get your work in public hearings after that. Right. Yeah. yeah. You would like I would defer I would introduce it, but I would defer to you to like walk us through it, right? This is your work. Right. Okay. I guess part of part of me asking that was like, um so in addition to this memo, we might also want to submit like a version of the zoning ordinance that's marked up with like changes and stuff to have be the thing that's actually adopted yeah so what would happen is yeah we would get the markup of this right. is what it's changing to mm -hmm. right so you would provide that explanation of what it is but you would right. give the original with those markups yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah okay we would have to do that with the yeah uh, so our next meeting is september 26th do we think it is possible for us to finalize this on September 26th? 
a month from now. I hope so. Pretty close, probably. Or at the very, okay, so at the it very depends least. a little bit like what Barb says about. Yeah. So let's say our stuff. one, two, three, four, our like drop dead date of really finishing is October 24th. Yeah. What, I mean, could we do, I well, guess October 24th isn't really that late. I mean, it's two months from now. Yeah, it's not. Like, should we do we another could, meeting before? Get it as like, close huh? as possible on the, in the September. Yep. And then do final. Final, final approval and edits on the 24th. Yeah. Can every if Kayim is allowed to compile our edits on it Kayim, by Kayim's self, then I think September, the September date is doable. If we can have one presentation of all revisions and discuss it in one meeting. But if we have to compile them in person together, I think that's gonna yeah, okay. add some time. I will get clarification on that. Can everybody make it to the meetings on September 26th and October 24th? As is now, barring any. Oh, I'm in August. September illnesses, 26th. unexpected trips. I should be able to make that. Expected trips. Expected trip. Like, don't get COVID in Europe. Oh, what did you say? Yeah, don't, don't get that. COVID in Europe. When are you going? September 1st to the 14th. So okay. exciting. Well, Paris, Marseille, Barcelona, and Amsterdam. Wow. That's what we did, except for the second one. <laughs> Marseille. Barcelona, so not yeah, in Amsterdam, Paris, Barcelona. It's Barcelona. You better start preparing. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that till I got there. It's like, oh, well, the October is the 24th. Correct. September 26th. And that's um, okay. 24th. So I will check with Barbara to tomorrow. Connie's going to check with Dylan about the process. Based on Barbara's response, we will figure out how to move forward with continuous edits. Um, and then we'll meet again on September 26th and try to get everything done and wrapped up on October 24th so that we can present it to Councilor Denham to present it to City Council sometime hopefully in sometime in November. <laughs> I cannot do October 24th. You cannot? I cannot zoom in. I will be when on the ship. do that in November? In the ocean. So I will be gone. That's where ships usually are. Yeah. But <laughs> do we want sure to right clarify? Well, I don't have... Lindsay's so sick, so I, I mean, as long as we have a quorum, it's okay if you're not here. Mm -hmm. We can wait till we Actually, get. A I don't know. Closer. Is there like? I really don't know my schedule because it's also like a work cruise. So I'm like, I know. So I'm like, hey, I'd say it's awful. Like, I have the worst Sorry, job. So, <laughs> gosh, you know, I was just I got behind because I was stuck in Vegas for two weeks for work. It's like it's just anyway. Um, so yeah, I absolutely might be able to zoom in, but I don't let's know. revisit it on September 26th in case yeah. anything else has popped up for anybody in October. And I think Yoshi's still trying to join. Okay. Because Kate resigned. Officially resigned. Yeah. And officially resigned. Well, we asked, we sort of asked her to because Yoshi tried to join and Barbara full, said we that full. we were full. Um, I didn't, I didn't think that, think that we were. No, it October is October 24th. Donna. Um, but, and Kate doesn't come, and we know that she's not going to, and so she was fine with that. And then, yeah, and then quorum was kind of an issue because it's like percentage based. Is that right? Something like that. It's like you have to have a majority. Oh, right. All right, Depends so we'll revisit the October date Depends on September 26th. Some groups treat quorum as like possible seats versus filled seats. Uh, I did email her from okay. this meeting. I just remember Jana once saying that. I, I had a long, we need four, need four, and we need three. Yoshi, yeah, three. Yoshi that's Yoshi how we. I'm just looking at our members list here. You mean in East Hampton? Yeah, no, Chelsea, the housing yeah. partnership, but oh, like oh, the, ED, oh, the EDIC so does it. Yeah, she does it right? if, Have we met her yet? Like oh, they need everyone member? who's on the committee to yeah, Chelsea, go because oh, they only have half their committee filled. Uh, so uh, that's, 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 that's how they do it. That's what Barbara tells me. I didn't know we had a new member. You have a new member? Vaguely sounds familiar. Yeah. Oh, I saw that on the list and I was like, yeah. Do I add them to our authors? <laughs> no, but I oh I didn't know I would have invited them tonight. Yeah. Well, now we will. All right. I, I usually send an email that, that says like, oh hi, you joined the housing partnership. Yeah, Chelsea, what's the name Ben? Uh, Bowser. Bowser. Hmm. B A L G E R. Hmm. 
Oh, who wrote to me and asked if I knew them? All right, not you. Brad. Um, All right, I will. Okay, let's. City Council meets on what days? The Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Like on the sixth and the twentieth of November. Third. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Those are both before I for California. Oh, some other trip to have? Yeah, I'm going to. We're going spending Thanksgiving with my partner's family. Okay. Nice. All right. Do we have anything else we want to discuss tonight? Have we? Um, I know people went to meetings about. 385 Main Street, mm -hmm. and I just was curious to know how these went. Uh, I thought they went very well. Um, the So there was a little bit of a snafu um, with the public hearing. So they started the public hearing back in like, I don't know. We May. went to that first yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Then there was an issue with the, um, with notifications of the abutters. So then they had to restart the whole thing over again. And that was actually at the police station, which was very confusing to those of us who did not read the agenda very carefully and realized it was at the police station. So there was like, the there the were like five of us upstairs, like, why is it so dark up here? This is really weird. And then we realized it was at the police station. Um, I thought it went very well. I mean, um, Donna was there, Kayam was there online. Um, there was only, can join and be our our eyes and ears okay or our ears and mouth all right <laughs> so great and i just messaged her to say all right can, shut down. We're, we're starting. can you hear us donna i'm gonna make sure that the settings are set okay, now i don't know what to do what happened mm -hmm. Oh, because I made you a co-host. That's why you're still in it. Yeah. That's why I hopped back on, because I was hoping that I could save Donna. I think you're on mute again, Donna. And it's coming. Okay. Okay, we're back. Sorry, everybody. The laptop was unplugged and ran out of batteries. And I didn't notice. Um, so anyway, I thought the meeting went really well. There was only two people that spoke in opposition. Um, right, two, three, maybe? It's like, yeah, two or three. Quite a few people that spoke in support, um, including some neighbors. Yeah, a lot of, every abutter was in, in support. Yeah, yeah. Um, some folks from, yeah, I mean, so it was very it's great. Positive. Kayam spoke and someone in the audience clapped for him. Oh. Um, I didn't hear that, but well, she was behind me. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it went very smoothly. So then mm -hmm. the following meeting was last week, week before, and Donna and I were there, and they didn't have a quorum, and they couldn't get Google Meet to work. <laughs> and so, oh. but the decision was already First drafted. So, like, you know, I don't, I don't You're think. I think they're going to approve it at the next meeting. Next meeting is in September. Cool. Um, Do we know what's happening with um, the Tasty Top thing? Like, where's that at? Because I told you that that day that I drove by and there were like, there was a podium and news trucks. Yeah, but that was about something else. They were just like okay. stationed there. That's so weird. I don't know. I haven't been paying any attention to Tasty Top. I think Donna said there was something about a bridge. Too far. No, that they remember. Yeah. remember Yes, and then if you've ever been in the property, there was like one part of the property where this like, they had to make a bridge to go over the wetlands into mm -hmm. the back part. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think they wanted approval. Did they get approved, Donna? I didn't go to the She's typing furiously yes, now. Um. <laughs> Isn't it great when we uh, We missed type? the meeting. So we don't know what's going on with that project. Okay. Um, I do was know, was this at the last meeting? Maybe. Because I watched it and I didn't quite 
know what they were talking about because I didn't follow it before. But basically, it it had to do with having a full time like supervisor there at the time who was like for building it or like related to the conservation aspect of it. Okay, um, I kind of watched yeah, it. Yeah, sometimes you need like a their sensitive habitat. You need yeah. like a monitor there to make sure that the tractors don't like run over, run over a turtle. turtle or something. Yeah. Oh, but I have no idea if that's what's happening here. <laughs> and the contractors were saying that's incredibly expensive. Yeah. Agree to that. Sure. Oh. There's this, I don't know where that is. I just, he said, I am calling to the mayor. Mm -hmm. oh, she's away. So I'm trying to. She's in Chicago this week. She's doing something important. Uh, I heard her on the radio tonight. Yes. Yes. Um, interesting. Okay. But I didn't, I didn't have enough background. I just like. Did that make sense with what Ben was saying? Yeah, so was about like the environmental monitor. Okay. Um, well, I did, um, did my work life here from home city housing about the 11 ferry street project mm -hmm. that they um have submitted their application to the state they don't think they're going to get funded in the first round because nobody gets fun usually you have to submit twice and so they are predicting they would be like occupied in early 2027 okay which is a little bit later than i thought but well, um that's this is 385 main that's 11 ferry street oh uh, and I don't know what's what's up with the schools, right? It's a great question. What's up with the conveyance of the buildings to the developer, Councilor Dedham? Um, Is that a property committee issue? Yeah. Um, they are. I can't. I can't speak to the nuance of it, but um, it went back because of the situation with the gym, mm -hmm. and now they're kind of oh. City Council had to say and agree that, okay, we were going to let the gym go. Um, and so that is in that process of discussion. Of, uh, oh, okay. That's why there was all of a sudden this like refiguration about the gym. And, yeah. Okay. It was like, why are we talking about this again? <laughs> Which is unfortunate because I, I thought it doesn't matter in this meeting. So, but I can see why. Okay. Um, oh, I want to see. Hmm? Oliver Street. Oh, I don't know what's going on with town lodging. I think they did the ar doing architectural, archeo archaeological stuff. Okay. Do you um, want me to ask Jess to give us an update? Yeah. Maybe the next, the meeting? next meeting. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I think she's away right now. But yeah, that would be good to get an update on what's going on up there. Mm -hmm. um, I've, yeah, I've seen a lot of negativity online about it recently. Oh, so recently? Just, yeah. Oh. Not, well, like maybe like a month ago. Uh, relatively recently, people in the neighborhood trying to rally together to change the place they haven't looked at in 20 years. Oh, okay. Um, trying to not change the place they haven't looked at. All right. Um, because falling down is so much better than fixed up. Um, anything else? Um, Brad sent us an email, you and I, about. Oh over there yeah i mean if oh cottage square yeah the cottage the, the, the artist department. stuff i have not i admit, i know john has been paying attention to this i have mm -hmm. not been paying very much attention to it yeah i mean speaking frankly i think i definitely support like the cause of the artists i but i do see very much the perspective of like a nonprofit and their fiduciary duties to like do follow their mission and in some ways like i i did that's a tough thing right like yeah. you can see both sides for sure yeah um i thought that the they released like some sort of competitive like negotiation document that was like here's comps here's what we would like um as like a counter offer um, um but i just i have not engaged in it at all just because it's been like lower on my priority list but I don't know that do it's necessarily things. a housing partnership priority that we want to focus Definitely on. Definitely not. I think a little bit more the coalition side, but mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, there's very little energy there at the moment. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. We'll just, um, oh, 
I mean, businesses are being impacted. You're looking at 80 small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So that has an impact on their livelihood and yeah. their ability to work, work and pay five dollars a square meter. You know. Uh, um, yeah, some of the yeah. So Donna's comment is some of the rents were five dollars as low as five dollars a square foot, yeah. and that's not the case anywhere. I think the trouble. The trouble. I mean, I don't know much about this, but just in general, when you have a like, we had a space in um mm -hmm. that we rented in Greenfield that was incredibly cheap. It was like seven hundred dollars, and it was. We always were so happy how cheap it was. And then when we had to move, like it's you. You know, so sometimes when you, the rents stay lo too low for too long, yeah. like it's if they'd incrementally raised it, it might have been better for them, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than like crippling it in one year. I think the, the challenge is some fifteen dollars per square foot. No, she just put that in the chat. The, the challenge is some people's rent is going up one hundred and sixty percent, right? Yeah. And also the comps that were used, and East Hampton Savings Bank is now said that was not our intent. Mm -hmm. oh. The use of this, and we didn't. It was done by an outside thing, but anyway, it, it, what they should have done is looked at comps in the community, right? And within the community, they are in fact ten to twelve dollars, right? And so, mm -hmm. them raising it to fifteen dollars, which they are legally within their rights to do so, uh, it is going to have an impact on. Well, it might shift some people from here over to Keystone, mm -hmm. you know, which happens. Here to Holyoke. Right. I think yeah. Yeah. My optimistic, you know, idealistic worldview, I'm like, maybe Riverside Industries uses this as an opportunity to amend their mission to have help something artists. about the community or yeah. help mm -hmm. artists. But like, legally, like, they can't treat that as a priority. Right. Because it's not existing. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to make up work that's not been done because of the yeah. low rent. They could be sued, literally. Yeah, by like the state attorney general. Okay. Well. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Nope. All right, I'll do my homework. Jackie has ho Jackie and Lindsay have homework. I'm gonna soften up my community character paragraph, and we I, we will find out from Barbara how to do edits. And what the process is from Dylan for Dylan. Yeah, I guess just let us know what you hear about the edit, I will. editing I will. process. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you know about Dylan. Um, all right. I'm gonna adjourn the meeting at seven twenty seven. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.